want to say here. Hello, everyone. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Okay, so um, thanks a lot for having me. It's uh, really exciting to be uh, within this uh, multidisciplinary group of people. I think that's what our work has always been, trying to bring together different disciplines. Of course, we are designers, so we sit in the, in the, in the, in the kind of design uh, area where we try to propose solutions, uh, both with uh, the Bio-Urban Design Lab in UCL and Ecologic Studio, which is uh, our practice. So we, uh, the core of our research is really looking at cities from the systemic point of view, which means that we, of course, look at global cities as, as centers, as hubs where many people are moving. And of course, we all know that urbanization is, 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 is growing. But at the same time, we try to understand them in relationship to the sites which feed uh, main cities. So we all know that the world today is a, is a web, is, is a network with uh, uh, flows of resources that come from very far away. So for every big city that keeps growing, there are new sites which are transformed into manufactured landscapes, as somebody uh, calls them, uh, like the one you see in the picture here. So if you look at the infrastructure, the physical connections, uh, airplane, train, uh, uh, roads, shipping routes, uh, it's, it's massive. So the network is, is getting more and more uh, intense. So we can argue that cities are not necessarily, cannot be defined anymore as necessarily as confined uh, 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 objects, let's say, but uh, they are really part of a, a, a extended metabolism, a living system which is defined by these flows uh, of information, energy, and, and matter. Uh, which means that cities can be seen as turbulent system, turbulent dynamical systems. And that's the way we try to, to, to look at them within our uh, research. Uh, this brings uh, three main design problems, let's say, which we are uh, uh, engaging. Uh, and uh, one is the uh, planning uncertainties. The other one is the remetabolization of the existing. And the third one is the breeding new urban morphologies. Um, I'm going to give you some examples now for each of them, just to give an idea of the range of, of, of work that, uh, that we are doing. And of course, planning uncertainties means trying to design for a world that is changing really fast. So how can we come up with strategies, urban design strategies, that are resilient or robust uh, within uh, a context that changes so rapidly? And of course, uh, uh, social insects uh, have learned to do that, have evolved that skill uh, quite well. So we looked in, into that. And we are looking into their ability to develop fairly complex uh, uh, nests, uh, which are their own cities, if you pass me the metaphor, mm -hmm. um, which are not only quite complex as morphologies, but also uh, are able to sustain different forms of life, uh, from the fungi garden that exists within the nest to the larvae and to the colony uh, itself. They do so without a, an overview, so no single ant has a clue of what's going on overall, but they self-organize. And of course, self-organization is understood now quite well by scientists. We're trying to use computational tools to bring that understanding within the discipline of architecture and urban design. So we use the softwares like processing, which some of you may be familiar with, and codes that have been developed uh, in the years. People like Marco Dorigo worked on that. They are applied already to swarm robotics, other fields of application, but essentially you can program local rules of interaction and you can observe emerging patterns. And this pattern can be tested in different conditions and also can be understood as adaptive uh, to environmental changes, to the uh, amount of resources available, to the change in climates, in economic, etc. And last year, we did the research in, in Tunisia uh, in four different sites. I'm going to show you three of them very quickly. But it's interesting because we were able to apply uh, these uh, techniques to real context. This is a city Bouzid, which is an agricultural center of, of Tunisia. Actually, the, the origin of the Arab Spring was there. So this place actually became well known recently. And we tried to propose new food networks there, uh, really deploying this kind of logics and try to draw them and materialize them as urban morphologies. Uh, in particular, dealing with the problem of erosion and desertification of the area, but also with the reprogramming of cultures. So uh, uh, the, the, the kind of push for uh, olive groves and other uh, monocultures that pushed away the market garden typology. And so the, we were trying to understand how to reprogram that within the landscape. And these are some of the images that we produced in the end of these new uh, uh, edible landscapes, as we like to call them. We also looked at 
more precise prototypes that could be combining tradition with technology, uh, which obviously local people are very fond of. Uh, the, other, the other case study was uh, in Tunis, at the South Lake of Tunis, which is, uh, somebody would say, polluted with algae, but we see algae as a resource. So we try to understand how we could reconfigure the landscape <laughs> as a new bio-industrial landscape, which would produce uh, resources, energy, and food from what is now a sort of wasteland for many. So we looked at biofilms technology, we went quite into detail, and then we tried to generate morphologies that would incorporate these technologies into a new form of landscape, a new form of urban landscape. Again, we ran some of our simulations to understand how network may emerge in these uh, changing environments and how a kind of uh, extension of the city may unfold over it. And these are some of the images produced. The third site was in the desert, uh, in the Chot al Jarid, at, at the edges of the Sahara, where one of the big solar concentrator plants is planned to bring renewable energy into Europe. And uh, our students looked into how to reimagine the harvesting of renewable energy as a network in the lake. And they were amazed by how cyanobacteria can survive in such an incredible, extreme environment. And they looked into bio catalytic cells as a way of generating low voltage but distributed renewable energy. And of course, then they begin to imagine how this could be a new kind of urban landscape which uh, harvests this energy in the lake. These are some of the visualization of it. The second case study is the remetabolization of the existent. And uh, here we, we jump to another scale. And uh, I show you some of the prototypes that we have developed, which particularly deal with the idea of um, cultivating, harvesting, remetabolizing algae. Algae are everywhere. Um, and you will find them in London, in ponds, canals, etc. But they are often sort of neglected as a resource. And one of our programs was really looking at how algae may become a new uh, 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 layer of the metabolism of the city. Uh, not only for energy, but also for food, medicals, and other applications. And we started to develop a series of prototypes that would really look at how we could transform interiors and exteriors environment through the development of algae farming. This is um, a piece we presented in Paris uh, in um, an in in exhibition called Alive, in which we created a column and a ceiling, uh, which would, uh, in fact, uh, work as a photobioreactor, uh, 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 kind of growing and harvesting algae uh, passively uh, uh, and in, as a continuous flow. Uh, we, of course, had to go into the technical aspects of it, breaking down all the cycle, photosynthetic, oxygenation, saturation, and so on. But we particularly pay attention to how this could become a new interface. We are interested in, can we develop new practices? It's not just a question of uh, form as such, but it's also how this becomes interface, how it drags people into a new awareness. And this, of course, uh, uh, happened at the level of the installation, but we are now moving also to a uh, real scale application. This is another piece here in London in the Architectural Association, which was uh, again a, a kind of photosynthetic ceiling hanging from one of the Georgian rooms and, and sort of bringing algae in a completely different context. You see the different colors corresponding to different species, and, and of course, also looking at the possibility to couple algae with. Uh, uh, bacteria, which happens in nature with bioluminescence, which is a quite extraordinary phenomenon. Again, the idea of the interface, not only people are involved in the cultivation, in the farming, the oxygenation of the environment, but also we looking at ways to extend the, the, the possibilities offered by these, uh, by these with, with digital technology. So in this case, using QR code, people could scan, access the virtual environment, get to know more about the algae themselves, tweet, and become part of a community that would uh, 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 kind of collaborate uh, into this enterprise of bringing urban algae farming. This is a new project we are doing, is extending in Milan for the furniture, uh, for the um, Expo 2015. It's hopefully it's gonna bring this to a larger scale. So since I'm almost finishing my time, I'm gonna leave you with a short video, which is showing you a case studies for a breeding new urban morphology, a city from zero. This is responding to a competition uh, for a city for atomic and renewable energies just outside Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. It was done in a team 
uh, together with the MIT, Carlo Ratti Associati, CASA, and Mike Batti here at UCL. And we were really looking at the possibility to create a, an operating system that would design the city and grow the city as resources and technology become available. So not just a center of research, but also a productive city, a productive landscape. Sorry. Yeah. Probably the, if you can just pull up the audio a little bit. We live in a beautiful world. And though it is in decline, we have a precious <laughs> chance to save it. Our proposal for KCARE offers a bold and beautiful solution. A carbon negative oasis growing from the wadis west of Riyadh. KCARE learns from the laws of nature, nurturing a city from the nutrients of its environment, growing it like a plant from its soil. Our proposal deploys a groundbreaking digital algorithm using powerful computation to accelerate traditional city growth rapidly evolving the optimum solution. This algorithm analyzes the climate of each and every wadi, scouring the site for shade and shelter. The wadis collect each precious drop of rain, nourishing the landscape of the parks and farms. An intelligent grid subdivides the terrain, searching for idealized connections between the plots, generating a range of routes that branch across the site, carrying car, bike and foot traffic. Buildings rise in concert amongst the plots, adapting in a chorus of feedback and response. The city arises like the soaring cliffs of the site, the next evolution of the nedged plateau, nestled in shelter, nurtured by nutrients, slowly emerging like a flower from its folds. Keiko will be the most energy efficient city in the history of the planet, harvesting wind sun and daylight, carbon negative, not just neutral. Buildings and landscape use closed loop recycling, filtering water and waste as harmoniously as nature. Nothing is wasted, everything is connected. The streets are threaded with smart sensing infrastructures, constantly monitoring and improving the performance of the city. Their urban operating system providing real-time information maximizing connectivity and self-awareness. The parametric design system allows maximum adaptation, reshaping small spaces to optimize views and comfort. Cool private courtyards bring shading and planting, places of rest and peace and contemplation. KCARE promotes a simpler, cleaner, easier lifestyle. Symbiotically and organically marrying humanity and nature bringing peace and harmony, comfort and ease. KCARE offers a new kind of sustainability. Its new technologies enable and improve older traditions of sustainable living, continuing the Islamic practice of the stewardship of the land. KCARE will be a living, responsive, real-time city, sustaining citizens in sync with their surroundings, organically growing across the land and the world inspiring and transmitting ideas that will help change and save our planet. Okay, so this is probably what we could leave it with, a kind of utopia of a city bred by its resources. But um, yeah, this, if you're interested in the research we do, uh, we published a book last year called Systemic Architecture with Routledge, and you can find it on, online on libraries. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Whatever makes you curious. And how is your proposal for KK? 
The proposal for Keker actually didn't go too far because the competition sort of stopped at the level of the invited competition. I think there were five proposals. We were finalists. We got uh, to expand it a little bit. And then, you know, as often happens with this kind of uh, projects in the Middle East, uh, it, 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 you know, it works a bit like that. But I think for us, it was quite interesting also as a kind of a exercise uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a quite paradoxical brief, if you want, no? because it's always the case in these situations where you have... Uh, uh, sustainability coupled with a kind of a, uh, if you want, a model of development which is maybe not necessarily sustainable per se. So it's a kind of paradox you are you have to deal with, and somehow we try to to propose this idea of the uh, city which uh, kind of adapts in real time and how we can perhaps bring the technology and the landscape together uh, in the, in this new way. Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the second example, the one that uh, I was showing about this uh, series of installations with algae, etc., I, I, I choose to, to show you more the, the, the kind of a material installation work just because I wanted to show the different scales we, which we are dealing with. But actually, that, kind, that level of research is really more about the retrofitting of, of existing cities. And we, we choose algae as a kind of medium to discuss that. And we did a series of projects in Milan, in London, in Sweden, in which we applied that kind of logic to the city and to the landscape. We did a regional development in Sweden. So we did a few work which are specifically uh, related to the kind of what we call the remetabolization of, of existing cities. And that is the, 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 the case with, uh, with, the algal, with the algal research. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting point. We, we had, a, we had a, a consultant working on transport developments. We, it was not necessarily what we, we were kind of dealing with. We were more looking at the uh, landscape and resources as such. But I think that there were different means proposed because the city was at first imagined as a sort of campus model. That's what they, they had in mind. So the, we, we thought that a lot of the areas, that the smaller neighborhood could be functioning without uh, uh, the need of, of, of uh, transportation. And then there was a, this a kind of a, a, a sort of a, a train link connecting the, the various uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, let's call them neighborhood uh, across the wadi because basically the landscape was a very kind of a rugged one. So what we tried to do was to develop these clusters in the, in the places, in the spots that were more uh, suitable for inhabitation because of the shadow, the proximity to the water, etc., etc. And then uh, there was this uh, kind of a linking through them. Um, I, I couldn't go, I cannot go more in detail on that part because it was not necessarily our focus. We were working more on this uh, kind of operating system idea uh, uh, and, and, and so how like landscape and resources could be uh, uh, translated into a kind of adaptive morphology, let's say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, the idea is that we always uh, try to uh, start from the indicators that seems more kind of relevant in a particular site or in a particular condition that we are that we are analyzing. So in a way, there is a part of the of, of the work that is very site specific. But on the other end, we are developing a series of tools and techniques that that can be applied to different contexts and that are able to kind of process different kind of data. So. Uh, it's always like on one side the kind of development of techniques and on the other side the sort of designer understanding of a specific context which, which makes us decide which one would be better starting from. Mm. Uh, you're referring to the last, the, yeah. the last one. Yeah. Um, no, the, the brief actually was not very detailed, but it was really about the idea of a city that is at the same time a research center, so a bit like a kind of academic campus as such, but but also is a kind of producer of renewable energy. So the idea was a place in which you had a part that a big part that is uh, related to to research and of course residential connected to it, and a part that is uh, devoted to to production 
uh, of, of, of uh, energy and renewable resources. And the two should be kind of integrated. Uh, that's the, the kind, that was the kind of vision. Mm, yeah. Okay, thank you. I Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs>